Hi, I'm Bruno Aziza, and today I'm sitting with Kevin Turner, who is the Chief Operating Officer at Microsoft. Thank you very much for your time, Kevin. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So you have a unique role at Microsoft and also your approach to success for CIOs because you were a CIO before. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about how a CIO can succeed in an organization? Well, I mean, I, I clearly think that the CIO, particularly in the, the opportunity and window of time that we're in now, uh, is a very unique position. I mean, we're coming through some of the economic turmoil that we've had the last 24 months. Companies are really looking for technology and innovation and, and, and reinvention, uh, and reinvention of business models. This is a great opportunity for CIOs to step out in front and lead and become uh, the chief innovation officer, if you will, uh, versus the chief information officer. And I think that that's a real unique window of time. And I, I, I think the more that, that CIOs can really solve hard business problems and move from IT to BT, which is what I call business technology, uh, to create business value, I think that's a real opportunity for CIOs to get ahead and, and to become you know, the mo one of the most, if not the most important person below the CEO in any company. Is there specific examples where you can expand on when you talk about business technology, the idea of providing data to information workers, or maybe expanding the use of information across the organization? Well, I mean, I think every company is just inundated with information overload. And the problem with the, the systems of the past is they've all been built around creating information, providing some level of transparency, some companies took that to the next level, which was exception reporting and exception management. And as a result of that, it was very hard for the data to turn into information, the information to turn into uh, decisions, and the decisions to turn into actions. And so when you think about that sort of model, the real opportunity is how do we get things to action? And, and how do we create uh, optics in such a way and transparency in such a way that drives intuitive behavior for an organization. And, and scorecards, dashboards uh, are very useful vehicles to help facilitate that. And so there is the aspect, of course, of getting information to people, connecting with others so they can make better mm -hmm. decisions. But you also have this view on the next phase of data, which I think you call predictive simulation. Do you want to That's tell correct. us what that is? Well, I actually think that the world-class companies that evolve their information models uh, and business process models to some form of predictive simulation where, whereby they can take results from the past. They can factor in trends in the marketplace. They can factor in all the input from the collaboration and the teaming that goes on uh, through the use of great products like SharePoint and others to be able to really synthesize that data and what's going on in the marketplace and then run your business through it, run your next three months, your next six months through it, I think is a very unique opportunity. When uh, at Walmart several years ago, the ability for us to react to a hurricane uh, because of what people buy and when they buy it both before the hurricane and after the hurricane was a very interesting experience. And so the ability for us to uh, look at weather patterns and get a little bit more predictive on when hurricanes were going to occur look at what people bought in the past, predict the hurricane, stock up on those items like sleeping pills uh, and beer yep. uh, and diapers. Those were three big things that people bought before uh, a hurricane, flashlights, batteries, those type things. And they stocked up and hoarded those items ahead of time and we never had enough. And so the ability to predict uh, using weather pattern data and, and uh, a lot of the, uh, the wind and, and uh, water movement data to be able to predict what the supply chain should look like, what those inventories should get to, really translates into more sales, more revenue, and higher customer satisfaction because you have what the people want when they go into the store. And so that's an example, a simple example of predictive simulation, but we used to try to predict our business about six months out to try to predict what color, what trend, what, what item was going to be hot that was going to become scarce that we could uh, you know, uh, update and uh, increase the supply chain levels to help drive more volume. And so what I'm hearing here for our CIO audience is really the ability not just to harness the data and the mass of data, not just surfacing it through reports, but also collaboration data. But more importantly, is actually running the business ahead using yeah. that data and modifying Mo as you're finding Moving from more. exception management to predictive management so that you can eliminate the exceptions. That's, That's the real magic. Well, thank you very much, you Kevin, for your time. Thanks for having me on.
Until next time, I'm Bruno Ziza.